Hello everyone, welcome to another one of my lead code videos. In this video, we'll do lead code 23, merge case sorted lists. This is a hard problem. This is actually one of my favorite problems because it has like four different solutions. And so we'll talk through how to approach this problem, the different solutions, and their time complexities. This is also a very common interview question. So knowing these different approaches will help you have a good constructive and deep conversation with your interviewer. So let's get right into it. The problem is very simple. We're basically given a list of lists where each list is a linked list and each individual list is sorted, right? So we have about K lists and each individual list is sorted. And we then need to return one sorted list, like a combined list that is sorted, right? And note that there can be up to 10 to the four lists in total, right? So there could be a lot of lists in this array and each list is up to 500 elements. So we'll keep that in mind as we work through our solution. So let's brainstorm different approaches to solve this problem. So consider these lists as an example, right? So the first very simple naive approach is maybe we combine all of these lists into one singular list, right? So we'll have one, four, five, one, three, four, etc. So that's all of the elements one by one combined, right? So once we have this list and it'll take O N to create this list, we can just go ahead and sort that list, right? And that will take O N log N. And this algorithm is kind of, you know, the first approach, right? Which is N log N where we take all of the elements and just put them in a single list and sort them. Now, while this works, it can further be optimized because it doesn't take advantage of the fact that each list is sorted, right? So even if each list was not sorted, um, this algorithm would still work, right? So how can we improve our algorithm taking advantage of the fact that each list is sorted, right? So the next approach could be, okay, well, we know that the smallest element has to be in the first column, right, of all the lists because this is sorted. So the smallest one has to be in this list. So we can look at across all of the K items over here, right? And we can pick the smallest one. So we pick the smallest one, which is one. Let's say we picked this one, right? And then once we pick this one, we can then move the pointer to the next one, right? And then we then look at the remaining sort of pointers and then pick the minimum one again. So let's say we pick one, which is this one. And then we again move the pointer over here. And then we look at the remaining pointers and we continue, right? So the time complexity of that approach will be, first of all, each time we are picking a minimum from k elements, right? So that will be k. And then in total, we're picking n elements, right? Because n is the total size across all lists. That's how we are defining n. So this would be time complexity of O of n k. And this is obviously O of n log n. Now, this is slightly better, right? But how can we do even better, right? So if you noticed over here, we're picking the minimum of the K in linear time. We're iterating through each one of them, but maybe there's a better way to pick the minimum. And so there's a data structure called the priority queue, right? So in the priority queue, we can take the first column and put all of them in a priority queue, right? So we have one, one, two, two, one. All of this goes into a priority queue. Now, as soon as we can pick the minimum of the priority queue, take it out, and put that in our final list. And then we put the next one corresponding to this one in the list. So if we picked this one, the four is put back into the priority queue, right? And then we again pick the next one. And then the next one of the one we picked is three. So we then put three in the priority queue and we keep doing this. So every time we get from the priority queue, we'll get the smallest one. And every time we put back in the priority queue, we'll put back the one next to the one we picked. And so in this case, we're still picking N elements, but each time we pick, since the PQ size is always going to be K, 
and picking the minimum from a PQ is log K. So it's going to be N log K, right? And this is the more optimum solution. And now there is a fourth approach where you can technically get O1, but this is not possible in this lead code question because of the constraints. But let's say your numbers were only limited to one to 100 across all of the lists, right? Then what you could do is you could just set up an array from one to 100. Sorry, this is ON, not O1. So you could set up an array from one to 100 and then just iterate through the list and count how many times you see it. So if you see one, you increment the count at index one. If you see four, you increment the count at index four. If you see five, increment the count at index five. And then we see one again. So we increment the count at index one to two. We keep doing that. And at the end, we just loop through this array, which is going to be a loop of one to 100 and put the count number of elements in the final array. So the final array we'll have like, since if there's like two ones, we'll put one and one, and then we'll count how many twos, and then we put that many twos and so on. That will be a sorted array, right? So, but this again is only possible if we know the range beforehand and the range is small. In this case, the problem says that the range of numbers can be quite large. So this is not going to be efficient for us. So among these, and since we know that K is less than N, and remember N is the total elements across all the lists and K is the number of lists, right? So K has to be less than N because even if each item had one element, then K would be equal to N, right? And in this case, each item or each list has more than one element. So K has to be less than n. And because of that, we know that log k is less than k, right? So this is more efficient than this. So we eliminate this. And since k is less than n, then we know that log k is better than log n. So we eliminate this. So we're going to go and code this solution because it's the most efficient for the problem that we have right now. And just to recap, this solution was, again, involving creating a priority queue where we put the first element of each list in the queue. And as we take out the smallest element from the queue, we put back the element next to it and keep repeating until we have our final list. So yeah, let's go ahead and now code that solution. Okay, so first remember, we need to create a priority queue of list nodes. And inside the priority queue, we're going to compare each item by the value inside the list node, right? So we're gonna say, for each a, b, return the comparison of a and b using integer.compare, and that will give us the smallest element first. So now that we have our priority queue, the first thing we're going to do is then populate the priority queue with the first element of each list. And notice that the lists could be empty, so we'll make sure to handle that case if there's an empty list node. So let's start off by iterating through each list. And if list is not null, meaning there is a valid node at the list item, then we add that list to the PQ. And since this is a linked list, the first head of the list will be the first element, right? So that's why we just add that head node to the PQ. And now that we've added everything to the PQ, we'll just say while not PQ is empty, we're going to pull from the PQ using pq.poll, and then we're going to add to the pq smallest.next. So if smallest is dot next is not null, meaning if it's not the end of this list, then we're going to add to the pq smallest.next, right? So this makes sure that there is actually a next node in the list that we pulled from. And we just keep doing this while the PQ is not empty. So ultimately we'll get all of our smallest in this while loop. But now we need to add this smallest list to a final list, right? Our answer list. So let's create a list node of resulting list equals null. So initially this will be null and we'll return result at the end. So if our result is still null, what we'll do is set the result to the smallest because this is that means this is the first node right 
Otherwise, if the result is not null, meaning there's already a node in the result, is we need to add the smallest to the end of the list. So we need to keep track of the result end as well. And we'll initially set that to null. So over here, our result end dot next will be equal to smallest, right? So whatever the result end is, the next node of that will be our smallest node that we just pulled. And at the end, we want to set result end equals to smallest. So if result is null, we will have that result end also set to smallest and result also set to smallest. And if result is not null, then whatever the current end is, we'll append the next to the end of that list. And we'll set result end to smallest. And at the end, we have to re return result because we want to return the first head of that list. So hopefully this should do it. Let's try to run it and see how this does. Okay, so there's a compilation error here. I need to say a.val and b.val because a and b are still list nodes. Okay, so I also forgot this generics thing is over here, but now it works and you can see all the test cases pass. Let's submit. Perfect, accepted. I hope you learned something from this video and how to approach a problem in different approaches. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.